بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته السلام Today is the third of Jamaat al-Akhirah which is uh, commensurate with the 5th of April Yomu Jumu'ah I'm your brother Talib Abdullah as I like preaching and I'm here at Masjid the Tawheed the Sunni first I, I want to thank the brothers administration thank them for their good assumption of me that I could do this and I do. We're going to be discussing throughout the program a very important virtue. Without this virtue you can't do anything Anything which is undertaken by human beings is in need of sabr. So I'm going to be reading from Bab al-Sabr, the chapter involving sabr, just the introduction of Riyad al-Sadihin. The explanation will be from Shaykh Uthameen, rahimahullah ta'ala. Starts out, Bab al-Sabr, qala ta'ala, بعد أعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اصبروا وصابروا O believers endure and be more patient وقال تعالى ولتبدونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين And certainly we meaning Allah سبحانه وتعالى shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives, and fruit, but give glad tidings to those who are patient. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى إِنَّمَا يَوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Only those who are patient shall receive the reward in full without reckoning. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَمَنْ صَبْرَ مَنْ غَفْرَ إِنَّ ذَلَكَ لَمِنْ عَزْمٍ أُمُورٍ And verily, whoever shows patience and forgives, that would truly be from the things recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ and seek help with patience and salat. Verily, Allah is with the patient. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَنَبْدُوَنَّكُمْ حَتَّى نَعْنَ بِمُجَاهِدِينَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّابِرِينَ And we shall try you until we test those who strive hard for the cause of Allah and those who are patient. And the shaykh says that there are many verses in the Qur'an that express this meaning and give the good meaning of what the virtue of patience is. And the shaykh starts out, Rahim ta'ala, by explaining what sabr is, what patience is from the language of Arabic. It is what? Al-habs, barakallahu feekum. It is al-habs, restraint. It is restraint. And what is meant in the sharia. Habs al-nafs ala thalatha umur. Is the restraint of the soul dealing with three issues. Three issues. When one speaks of patience, it's speaking about restraining one's own self in three issues. The first one is, I'm interactive. So your tapes are going to have drops. Now, <laughs> the first one is what? Restraining oneself? Huh? 
uh, ta'a. It is restrain oneself to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said that in order to obey Allah, you need to be able to endure and, and hold yourself in the obedience of Allah. And you almost cannot do it unless you can endure being able to worship Allah. One must stay steady. The second one is what? Hmm? Hey, Naam. And one must restrain himself not to do the things that Allah has forbidden. And the third one? That a person must show proper restraint when Allah has ordained something for him or her which is painful. This is specifically dealing with a painful qadr. Specifically dealing with that thing which has been ordained in the life of a person which you and I are not going to be able to avoid that causes pain. Because there's a proper way to show patience and there's an improper way to react to painful events in one's life. Well, Amr al-Awwal, Shaykh says the first one, and yasbir al-insan ala ta'atillah. He said the first one is, the person must restrain himself to be able to obey Allah. He said, لِيَنَّ الطَّاعَ ثِقِيلَ عَلَى النَّفْسِ وَيَسْعَبَ عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ He said, because obeying Allah, the obedience itself is ثَقِيلَ مَا مَعَنَى ثَقِيلَ It is what? Heavy. It's heavy. It is heavy. It is something which is not light. It is heavy on the soul to obey. He said, يعني يَسْعَبَ عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ He said, it's difficult for human beings, the issue of obedience. How many of us became Muslim and our brothers the first thing they said to us, this is going to be easy for you. How many, how many had that happen to them? How we, it is going to, <laughs> now, this is going to be easy for you. They acted like, and they, and they meant, I, they meant good, so we would be, you know, not afraid. But, yeah, he's thaqila an nafs. Not, it's just ab, Sheikh said. It has a, it has, it has a degree of difficulty. Kadanika, Rabbama takun thaqila ala bedim. It's going to, it's going to have a, a degree of difficulty upon the body. بحيث يكون مع الإنسان شيء من العجز والتعب especially if a person has some weakness in them or is exhausted has a degree of being tired كذلك أيضا يكون فيها مشقة على ناحية المالية he said also on the person's finances worshiping Allah SWT has a degree of difficulty upon the finances like the expenses of Hajj today نعم how many still have to go hey نعم how many months you been saving or years. <laughs> he said, you and your wife are going to make hajj. That's $10,000. Today. Thaqila. Not khafifa. So if we understand it's thaqila, what do we do? We prepare ourselves for that. To be patient at that level. He said, he's, and the shaykh says, can mas'ala to zakah, for those who have to pay zakah. Or mas'ala to hajj, the expense of hajj. Because worshiping, obeying Allah has something of difficulty in it upon the soul, upon the body. And it needs sabr. A person must have patience. And he must have effort. That's our word. A person must put forth effort. It can't be ajiz. And here it means helpless. Helplessness is not allowed in the religion. How many knew that? It's not allowed. Helpless is not an option in the religion. Another thing is laziness. Well, kesa, helplessness and laziness is not allowed in the religion. We don't have options there. The Messenger of Allah so said them sought refuge against it. Naam? He sought refuge against it. Ajiz with kesa. So you know, if you seek refuge from something, you know it's something that which is, which is not liked, which is something which is not supposed to happen or is, is not something that you, that you think is a, is a good virtue. So he said, sabr, it, it takes effort. Oh, believers, 
be patient and show more patience or rabbi too and tie yourself to obedience and fear Allah Azza wa Jal tuflihun so that you can have falah as our brother mentioned today in the khutbah al amru thani the second type of patience sabr an maharimillah haythi yakuf al insan nafsuhu amma haram Allah alayh he must have patience not to do the things that are haram he must stop himself Restrain himself from doing haram things so that he will not do them. Because the soul has an inclination toward what? Evil. It has an inclination. Ibn Taymiyyah said, between the, between the bad companions, and the soul's bad inclinations, and Shaitan's uh, uh, giving you this. Uh, the beautification of evil, all those things, a person must 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 uh, struggle against those things not to do haram. For in San Nefsahu, a person must restrain himself not to lie, not to cheat in transaction, uh, not to take the, the money of orphans, not to spend money in falsehood, not to use riba or interest and other things. Not to commit zina, not to use intoxicants, not to steal, and all those things which are major sins, and many of them. So one must restrain himself. He must put himself in a self imposed prison. Because the word for prison, one word is uh, sijin, the other word for prison is haps. And hapsu is a prison also. A person must imprison himself against doing those things. He said, this also takes effort on the part of the believers, on the part of the worshiper. And a person must stop himself, and he must stop his desires, his hawa. Amr the third situation. For who was sabra ala aqdari la and mu'lima? It is when a, per a person must restrain himself to have patience upon the things which are but have been ordained from Allah that are painful. The Sheikh said because the things that people have been ordained for people are either what? They either are pleasurable or they are painful. The Sheikh said this the, 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 the qadr of Allah, which is pleasurable, tahtaj ila shukur. This you give thanks for. When you, when you gain pleasure from what Allah subhanahu wa has ordained, this you thank him for. He said, and shukur is part of the first part. It, it is what? It is an act of obedience to Allah to thank him. He said, if there's no pleasure in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for a person, then it is one which is painful. You tell it in sanfi badani, this pain, this test could be felt in his body. You tell it in malihi bifaqdihi. It could come in, his, in his, uh, his wealth because he may lose it. You tell it in ahlihi, he is tested with who? His family. You tell it in majtami'ihi, he's tested by what? His? His? Huh? His? His society. A society is a, is, a, is a means of test. And there are many, many things from these tests that need a person to have patience and they must have effort. And so the person must have a proper way of responding to these. It is haram for him to show anxiety to this with his tongue or to show improper anxiety in his heart or to show improper anxiety with his limbs. And this is what you and I must be careful of. The painful thing which has been ordained by Allah, which a person uh, did not choose, as our brother said in the khutbah today, at the first strike, how will we respond? We cannot respond with improper anxiety with the heart 
You cannot respond with improper anxiety with the tongue, nor with the limbs. The Sheikh said, وَحَلُولْ مُصِيبَ لَهُ أَرْبَ حَلَاتِ People who have been afflicted with something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the qadr of Allah, it has four situations that can happen. The person could be resentful. The very first one shows resentment. He has patience with it. He is content with it. He is thankful for it. He sees the benefit of that pain. And this person has reached the level of, of his, his iman. We actually can thank Allah Azza wa Jal for allowing that pain to strike him. He said, these four situations, they come to people whenever they have been hit, afflicted by pain. The Sheikh said, as for the first condition, this is what he does. He shows what? He shows resentment. Shows resentment with his tongue or with his hand or with his heart. He starts out with the heart. Why? With the heart? And not because the heart is the leader. He is the leader of the rest of the body. How is this? What does this look like? And يَكُونِ فِي قَلْبِهِ وَلَعَدِ بِاللَّهِ شَيْءٍ عَلَى رَبِّهِ مِنَ الصَّخْطِ وَالشَّرْ He resents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He resents his Lord because this thing happened to him. When the Shaykh sought refuge from Allah, rahmatullahi alayhi, when it happened, he said this, he said, وَلَعَدِ بِاللَّهِ يَشْعُرْ كَأَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ ظَلَمَهُ بِهَادِ الْمُصِيبَةِ he is feeling as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has oppressed him. SubhanAllah. His feeling is that Allah has oppressed him because this thing has happened. How does it look when it's in the tongue? He starts to cry out with complaint. Ya wala, ya thubura. When you sub dahr, he starts to insult the time. He insults time. Every time this happens, this happens. Every time that happens, this happens. That. Yudhi Allah Azza wa Jal. Amma tasakhud bi jawarih, and with his limbs, mitla an 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 yaltima khada who smacks his face. Or he bangs his head, or he pulls his hair, or he punches a hole in the wall of his house, or he lashes out and causes fear in his whole house by smashing a hole in the wall because of something he was unavoidable by him. He had no control over, and that the tongue. Or with the tongue, he lashes up and starts to, in front of his wife and children, or in front of the husband and children, starts to curse words that can be heard across the street, or heard by the neighbors, or worse, heard by his flesh and blood, that he is going to have to raise to the point where they become good Muslims, because you know every boy is going to be who? His daddy. And every girl is going to be her mother. And so if you want to exercise control, you must be an example of that control. Allah help us and make us min al-swabirin. All these are signs of tasakhut. <coughs> or every time this happens, this always happens to me. And I can never get anything right. And something always goes wrong when I say that. Always goes wrong when I do this. Well, a person rips their clothes with their hands. Have a had a sacht, as Sheikh said. These are all shades of resentment. And I put some things in that weren't here, obviously, like striking the walls using, and using profanity. What is profanity? Does anybody know what it is? What do we call it? 
We call it cursing. Why do we call it that? <laughs> we call it cursing because it's cursing. <laughs> That's right. And now, who has a smartphone? Let's see how smart it is. <laughs> who has a smartphone? Look it up. Profanity. Why you should? What is? What exactly is profanity? What is profane language? Uh, 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 now, but who, 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 can, who can cause lag? Hey, now, so it is that. You got it? Is that all it says? Old language. From irreverent speech actions. Anybody has a? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Who was dua? Who was dua? Yes, Allah, not Allah, Adaman, Yudu. It is it is a dua which is asking Allah not to have mercy upon the one it is aimed at. Think about think about what they what they were originally. Think about don't think about them, but some of them have direct religious con uh, uh, connotations, direct religious connotations about who gave birth to who. About who was the son of who, and nonsense like that. About who who went to whose relative with Adi Bilal and all those kind of things. Do edia, edia, the asl edia, which is aimed at the person to do what to curse him, to curse her. It is called cursing. In its ancient form, it is a curse. This is why if it's, it's if it's used in the home, those words themselves they tear the house right down. They tear into the fabric of home life. We cannot use them just so. The D word, it means, what, is, what, is it, what does it mean that when children are here? That word, what does it mean? It, what, what is it? The children of the D. That of the, what mean what? It means what? Latin. It means Latin. It means curse. Those words are terrible and strong words that should not be used in our homes, ever. And turning on the films that have them today, and you can see the proliferation of the films that have them today, and they say them trying to make them like real life, trying to make it like regular language so that you and I become the tools ourselves of the destruction of our own people. Because you know, <laughs> the Hollywood it was an old thing they used to worship. It was an old wood, right? It was an old wood that people used to worship, old Hollywood. Now be careful that those are people who have fallen victim to the God of celebrity. What does celebrity mean? To be what? To be praised, to be celebrated. It comes from celebration. To celebrate this one and celebrate that one. While this one and that one's language is the language of the, of the cursed people. And it's cursing in the environment and I that. <coughs> the Sheikh said, all of these things, they do not free a person from affliction. Huh? The, the resentment from the heart, they don't free a person from affliction. Resentment is not a cure for affliction, is it? No. The resentment of the tongue, it is not a, an alas for affliction. It's not, a, it's not a cure for affliction. The, the anger, the outburst, and the rage of the, of the, of the hands because of, because of an, an affliction, because of uh, the qadr of Allah having, uh, being a source of affliction, it doesn't cure the affliction. The Sheikh said, Bel aladina yaktasibu ism sa'ala endohum musibatan. He said, if they do this, now they have two afflictions because there's no cure. So what is it? It's an additional affliction. The person now in the religion has a, has a, a problem, an affliction in the religion because he was resentful. And they still have an, an affliction in the dunya because this is causing them pain in the dunya. 
So now they have an additional pain, which it might have been a pain in their body or in the dunya. Now it is an affliction in the religion. Why? Because the response was what? It was wrong. He should say what? Among his sayings, What does it mean? Mm, but what, 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 the beginning of it. What's the beginning of that hadith? Al mu'min al qawi khayrun wa habba in Allah min al mu'min al da'if wa fi kulli al khayr. A strong believer is better than a weak believer, and both of them have good. What does it mean, strong believer? Yani, yarfa al thiqal. <laughs> because a person with a strong body could have the heart of a body. A person with a strong body could have the heart of an oppressor. His body's strong, his heart's oppressive. So it means it means quote the imam, and the duraf means not as strong as this one, doesn't do everything, but does uh, what is iman, but doesn't do it all. When it's good in both. You should focus on what? What should your worry, what should your worry be? Your focus should be about what? A never. Your focus should be a never, which means what? Benefit. Benefit in where? Two places. Where? A dunya wal akhirah. It's always the dunya wal akhirah. It's never just the dunya. Never just the akhir as long as you are not alive. But it's a dunya wal akhira. Both. Benefit in this dunya, benefit in the hereafter. Focus there. This is also the mark of an intelligent person. His focus is not on things which don't benefit him in the dunya and akhira. Ihras al mayan fa'aka wa sta'in billahi wa la ta'ajaz. And seek help from Allah and don't be lazy. Don't be helpless. Here again, don't be helpless and lazy. Al-Ajiz, this is the one who's helpless, he can't do anything. He First, he's helpless where? In the religion, and then he's helpless in the world. And there were certain um, cultivations for certain people that call out the, to call out the people they should be helpless. They should be weak. La abadan. Not the believer. And lazy? What, what is lazy? He's the one who could do it, but he doesn't have the heart, the fortitude to do it. He is bodily able to do it. He's intellectually able to do it, but his heart is weak, and so he, his heart, being the leader of the Jawadah, his heart is not strong enough to do it. First, that's in faith, and then it's in the world, because they come together. You're supposed to benefit from them from the faith and the world. Naam. Allah khalaqakum wa ma ta'amanun. Allah has created you and what you what? And what you do what? And, and what you make. Allah created you and what you made. If you made an airplane, Allah created you and he created what you made. If you built a building, Allah created you and he created what you made also. He gave you the opportunity. He gave you the materials. He created you and what you made. So the whole idea of sitting back and being helpless that comes from certain cultivations for certain people, it's not in the religion. It's not in the deen of Islam. Ihlas al-ayma in fa'aka wa sta'in billahi wa la ta'ajiz wa la taqulani li shay'in lo inni fa'autu la kana kaza wa kaza and do not say about anything. If I had done this, then this would have happened. Okay? If I had done it. Really? You control the qadr? No. You've been, now it's a test. You did everything, and now things don't turn out the way you thought they should turn out, the way I thought they should turn out. Now we don't respond with what? A tasakhut. We don't respond with sakht. You don't respond with the sakht of the heart, or with the tongue, or the limbs. <coughs> Rather, do what? Bel, qul. Say, qadallahu wa ma shafrad. It means say it. Allah, if 
tafthahu amal al-shaytan. The shaytan that will work you over about yourself. He tried to bring to you and I depression and sadness that will weaken our further efforts. Amma harathaniyah. فالصبر على المصيبة لأن يحبس نفسه وهو يقرأ المصيبة. This is the one where the person is patient. He doesn't like what happened to him, but he controls himself during the affliction. ولا يحبها. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like that it happened. ما كان يصبر نفسه وهو he restrains himself. لا يتحدث بلسان. He doesn't speak with his tongue in this way of resentment to Allah. ولا يفعل بجوارحه ما يقدم الله. He doesn't do things with his with his with his body that's going to do what that's going to make Allah angry with him. He doesn't talk about having his back against the wall. So therefore, he had to do kada wa kada. My back was against the wall. I had to do so and so. Back was against the wall. I had to commit so and so. Back was against the wall. I had to do so and so. Anybody ever heard that statement before? Nah, nah. Well, nah. Back was against the wall. Get off the wall. So now her back is against the wall. I have to do something now. You could give Allah. First, Allah is going to be angry with me if I did it. But I, I'm not paying attention to that. I, I, have, I have my, I'm an exception to the rule of the Sharia. SubhanAllah. Some people, whole groups of people, have made themselves exceptions to the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these ready made 595 excuses. Add water. Boom, a fool arises. Back's against the wall. Study the religion, you find your back is never against the wall. Your <coughs> choice is always the first, and we'll talk about this later in Shatara, from the words of Mitania. They have, you, have, you have choices. You have to see it properly. He doesn't do with his, with his, with his limbs what Allah would hate him to do. Or it makes Allah angry. His heart never has anything against Allah. And for sisters, sometimes sisters, if they have a miscarriage or their baby dies early in life, then they don't, they dislike Allah. Have some hatred in their heart. And this is from there, some women saying in the past that, yes, I felt this about Allah. Or, or you don't, you don't disrobe when something happens and take off your clothing. As though it was a lost one that had oppressed you. <coughs> he doesn't do any of these things. This is the one who has patience. For who has saw it like an old He is patient, but he dislikes that it happened. This is natural. He dislikes the pain, but he's patient. How did that is? When a person is content, even through the affliction. His chest is wide. He is completely content with the affliction. It's just, it's almost like, it's like it never happened to him. His condition does not change like it doesn't happen to him. He is thankful through this affliction. يَشْكُرُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهَا And he thanks Allah for the affliction. وَكَانَ النَّبِيَ عَلَيْهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ إِذَا رَعَ مَا يَقْرَهُ قَالْ Famous statement of the Messenger of Allah. If he saw something he didn't like, he would say, الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ عَلَى كُلِّ حَالِ يَحْمِدَ اللَّهِ He prays Allah upon the affliction. He prays Allah upon the thing he saw. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم that was displeasing to him. He was, or he had a difficulty, he would say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. How many of us have said it? We've said it now. We said, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Some people don't know what it means. You say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal, they think you just, you, everything is cool. It, well, it means everything is cool, but it has an indication that the person is going through, we call, we call going through something, but he's praising Allah through it. Barakallahu feekum. Wa yashkur Allah min ajdi an Allah yaratib lahu min athlawab ala hadi musibah. He's thanking Allah because he knows Allah is bringing through this musibah. He is bringing to him 
a reward for it. What's going to come from this affliction is going to be a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially when the deed is what? It's one of the deeds that's peace of be left. There are some deeds that there are deeds that are particular that are specific, specifically peace of bidi la. Nothing else can be could, can be uh, placed to them. If he was afflicted, peace of bidi la, then what can he say? He has to thank Allah because he's expecting his reward from where? From Allah. If people afflict him and he's doing a peace of bidi la, his reward is going to come from Allah because he wasn't doing it for them. So therefore, he doesn't have to expect what from them? Appreciation, nor praise, nor thanks. What he was doing, and that's a test for the one doing things. It's a test. He's, he's, they'll be afflicted by it. Because this world is what? What is this world? Its main purpose to do what? The main purpose, juzr. It's a bridge to the hereafter. Is it more than that? Is it more than that? No. Huh. It's a bridge to the hereafter. It's a bridge. So he thanks Allah because he knows the reward is going to come from Allah for his affliction. What you have, يَذْكُرَ عَنْ بَعْدَ الْعَابِدَاتِ أَنَّهَا أُصِيبَتْ بِأَصْبِعَهَا فَحَمِلَ اللَّهَ عَلَى ذَارِ فَقَالَ لَهَا كَيْفَ تَحْمِدِينَ اللَّهَ وَأَصْبِعَ قَدْ أَصَابُهُ مَا صَابَ And he says some of the women who, who, who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that their fingers Can I have a, anybody have a charger? Are we allowed to charge our phones? Uh, uh, what do you call it? A, um, yes, Android. Jazakallah khaira. So he was asked, how can you praise Allah when, you're, when, you're, when your finger has been, has been afflicted? In the halal of the ajraha, the sweetness of it and the bitter of it is patience. The sweetness of it and the bitter of it is patience. Thumma saqad mu'allaf. The Mu'allaf. And this is Imam Manawi. And then he brought certain verses from the Quran. Ta'ala. That in these verses is the encouragement to have patience and showing the virtue of the one who does it. Oh, you who believe. Have, be patient and show more endurance and patience and have taqwa for Allah so that you can be successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is ordering the believers with what is required by their faith. And will make their faith uh, noble. We have the awamr in these four orders. The Shaykh said that the patience on ma'asiya. The pa- patience to stay away from haram things. In this verse, first, the patience to stay away from. Sin, this verse is covered. And the endurance to, to worship Allah. And fear Allah that you can be successful. The first one, it means be patient not to do the things that Allah has made haram. Don't do them. Tajandibuha wala taqrabuha. It says it means stay away from them and don't come close to them. Such as what sin? The Quran orders not to come close. Like zina. Wala taqrabu zina. And don't come close to them. Wa min al ma'loom and al sabr an ma'asya la yakun illa haytu da'at ilayhi nafs. The Shaykh said it's known. That's a, this ability to stay away from, from haram things, it cannot happen except that the soul is involved in calling to it. As for the one whose soul doesn't care if he does sin, 
as the one who doesn't care whether he does it or not, it can't be said about him that he's patient about, about not being sinful. But if your, if, your, if your soul calls to sin, restrain yourself and stay away from it. The musabara means be obedient and, be, and have, endure so you can worship. Then the ta'a fiha amran. The Shaykh said that worship or upon obedience has in it two things. Amran. An amr al-awwal, fair, yet the kadda be an insan, use him nafsuhu be. The first one is, when he's obeying Allah, he has a responsible age, and he makes himself do it. The second one, thikrun ala nafs. The second, the second affair is the, is the obedience which is heavy upon the soul. Then the fi'a ta'at, katarkin ma'asiyah, thaqeel. Obedience such as leaving sin here again, it is heavy upon the soul. The soul that is amalatun bisu, that has the indication of evil. فَهَابَ كَانَ الصَّبْرَ عَلَى الطَاعَةِ أَفْضَلٌ The Shaykh said this sabr on ta'a, on obedience, is better than having sabr not to commit sin. So here, sabr to obey is of a higher, of a higher nature than the sabr to stay away from sin. قَالَ تَعَالَى وَاصْبِرُوا كَأَنْ أَحَدًا يُصَابِرُكَ كَمَّا يُصَابِرُ إِنْسَانْ عَدُوَّهُ فِي قِتَالِ وَجِهَادِ he said, you, you have to hold out and not and, and, and hold out for ta'a and be patient like a person facing an enemy. When he's obeying Allah, he must, he must have the patience of someone facing an enemy. He must worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when your child turns seven years old, what must you do? Amarahu bil salah. You must teach him, what else must you do? You must, um, uh, you, must com- you must command, but you also must do what with him? You must, you must, you, but, you, but at seven, you must start doing what? At, at seven, at seven, you must do what? Start teaching him. Now, I know some people say start hitting him at seven. All right, now. All right. <laughs> Why not hit him at five? <laughs> Let's hit him at two. <laughs> and I hate to say... I hate to say that our cultivation is toward that. See, success with children deals more with rifq ilayh. It's to be good to them when they're, there, when they're younger. It's to be good to them when they're younger. It's to be good to them. In child child, we're going to talk about it later. But so when the child is seven years old, you have to be someone who has the patience to do what? To teach and show him. And don't become frustrated. By you. The marabata means to do much good. And to continue to do good. That making wudu properly and your footsteps to the masjid and waiting for one salah after another that is rabat. That is Making proper wudu. This, this, this verse says, It means tie yourself to good things. And continue to do good. Don't be weak in doing good. Meaning we do good. Sometimes we develop a habit of goodness. Then we, did, then we leave it. Then we leave it. So he said, for instance, this hadith about making the wudu and, and, the, and the steps you take to the masjid. He said, That is rabat. One salah after another. Then the fee is timra, because this is continuous good and continuous, the continuous obedience to Allah. Mm-hmm. The Shaykh said, as for taqwa at the end of the verse, this, this is included in everything. Then the taqwa ittikhad ma, ma yaqa min iqab Because taqwa is to take the things that will protect you from being punished by Allah. And this is done simply by doing what? By doing what you've been commanded and by staying away from what you've been prohibited. Simple as that. As simple as that. Well, Falah 
كلمة جامعة تضر على شيئين. And this palah is a word that indicates two things. على حصول المطلوب It means a person gets what they love. وعلى النجاح من المرهوب And they stay away from the things that harm them in this world and hereafter. فمن اتقوا الله عز وجل حصل له مطلوبة والنجا من المرهوب So I'm going to stop here, barakallahu feekum, and take your questions for five minutes, barakallahu feekum. On this topic only. <coughs> this topic. Okay. Well, ta is difficult. Obedience. Yeah, the obedience, yes. Mm -hmm. But even if a person, what, 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 uh, what emotion motivates doing something? Mm -hmm. And what, emo what, what emotion motivates staying from something? Mm -hmm. Now, love and hate. Now, even if something is difficult, because a person has a, has a love for Allah, as well, he's going to he's gonna be able to come through the difficulty because he loves Allah, as well. Even if it's difficult. And if he hates to do the worship, if he hates it, then what could happen to him when I had He finds it difficult to do. The religion is easy for those who want it and hard for those who don't want it. So now you, so, so for instance, you have who in the home, in your home? You have your children in your home. So now you are teaching them how to make the salah. And they come to a certain age and now you're, they won't wake and you're sprinkling a little water on their face, right? So, a teeny bit of water. <laughs> Not <laughs> finjan. <laughs> Just a sprinkle. Not a pail <laughs> or glass. Just a sprinkle. And he gets up and you're helping him through it. But while you're helping him, you're teaching about who Allah is. You're teaching him simple issues about Allah is. Teaching him, yes. Well, that, de that depends. So the person, it, it, uh, affliction. It's an affliction. Well, look at the hadith that, that uh, our brother used in the khutbah today about the, about the lady who's going to paradise. Mm -hmm. She had. She had um, epilepsy. She had seizures. And she, and she asked, the Prophet said, Asbir, well, like a Be patient with you have paradise. <coughs> so that's enough. That's the one thing. That, yeah. My question is the emotion. Does it continue to break my sense of this now? Is this thing after this? I don't know. I don't know. But whenever we're afflicted, affliction, one of the roots of affliction is what? Sin. It is sin. It's well known. Affliction, a person cannot, and we're going to talk about this in Shalat from the words of Ibn Taymiyyah, but sin brings, in, in the end, affliction. So a person will always do a muhasaba, will look into himself or herself and say, this thing is a sin, I must stop. And ask Allah to help me stop this and decrease me in a certain affliction. <laughs> but that illness could be a way to yeah no, no. And without the without the complaint to gain reward. Without the complaint. Allah Yes. Uh, Mm. 
Me? <laughs> Two young men. What is your name? Hmm? Salah. What's your name? Hmm? Abdullah. Is there is there an age? Is there an age you'd like to be? No, not particular age, huh? No? Salah? Come on. Try I got a smile. Come on, you you a smile. Is there an age you'd like to be? Uh-huh. Young man, what's your name? Is there an age you would like to be? No? How old are you now? Hmm? What do you say? Ten? Ten. Young man here said he wants to be how old? No, no. He said 16. Mm -hmm. That's right. 16. And the groups of youngsters who are 10 and 11 or younger, they say 15, 16, uh, 18. They're young because they think there's a perception that here something is getting ready to happen. <laughs> and why? Because that's the way it's been, uh, people are cultivated to believe this. We also think, some of us, that if I use the word, the boogeyman resides in the 15 year old, the 13 year old. I know, no, but, I, but, I, but let's deal with let's deal, let's deal let's deal with the Muslim let's deal with the Muslim parent from the let's deal, let, let's please let's deal with the Muslim parent. He also some Muslim parents also believe that this age and it resides in evil. Some it's, it's good. In reality, the sh a shab is from what from the age of fifteen until he's what forty and forty. In here, he, he produces. Here he's strong, or she is strong. Youngsters, little ones, want to be them, and older people think about the time when they were them. <laughs> this time, this, this, is, this is a time, it really is. And the Quran talks about it. Allah says, he created you from dirt, he is the one who created you from weakness. That means what? A syphilis, child. And then after that, strength. That's from 15 to 40. What after that? Durf was sheba and gray hair. So in this place, in this place, as was said, there's an idea about it which is not true. <coughs> First of all, who said teenager? We said child, young adult, older. Didn't say teenager. That is actually an invention by certain societies. Came from their psychology that this one is a separate culture onto himself and to this very day, parents are afflicted by it and the young are afflicted by it. And they can hardly wait to break out of being a child. They don't want to be the old person so they can get to this particular culture that belongs to them, where they can buy, uh, sell, ride, look, comb, groom, listen. This was done in the West. It's called a teenager. Actually, it's called an adolescent. An adolescent. So at this time, so what, what should we have? That and yaqeen, and we should have certainty about our parenthood. Yaqeen about it. And don't think this is, this is coming. This doesn't afflict us like that. Um, there's two German words that was used to explain it. Sturm und Drang. Sturm und Drang. Sturm und Drang means storm and stress. It's a German philosophy. It was used to explain the teenager. In other words, the child must turn into a beast be unruly, and then after you reach a certain age, he'd be okay. How many thought that? You're fronting. It's a con it's a concept. It's a definite. It's a definite. Con it's a con we and we when we were when we were younger, especially the non-Muslims, we were waiting to, for the, to get to that door of the so-called teenager so we could cut loose and be a teenager. Came out of it and said, "What was that about? <laughs> what did I just do to myself?" That was crazy. And now we're trying to tell them that you need to slow down and don't do this. But, but Islam directs them to their actual place in 
the home and their place in society. And that must be that must be something we understand. Guidelines are raising them so they are cultivated to be in their proper place and not swayed by an illusion of some additional success or failure by being young. First thing is to separate the parent from the Shabbat, from the Shabbat. Don't separate. Step one, separate. It could be done with music. It could be done with film. It could be done with language. It, you don't understand my, my, my abbreviations on my phone when I say, when I say um, uh, uh, DK. What? 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 what, what? BRB. Yeah, yeah. B oh, BRB, but I got DK. I didn't know. So that, that means don't know. Oh, so you need, now, you know, now you need another interpretation of some other language now. <laughs> they have shortened it, and, 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 the, and the shortened it is like to keep people out who don't get it. So that's not necessary. What's necessary is to make sure that as a person is getting older, they understand that they don't have options to be um, unruly. They don't have it. It's not an option to do such a thing. And the first thing is, as you said, when it's younger, and if a parent has done everything they can, then there's no blame upon them. If they did everything they could do. If they, if they say, people say they did the best they could do. If they did the best they could do, then the child has um, a firm understanding about the Aqidah, and all he has to do is just, is just remind it. Remind, remember what you, what you learned. If he, has a, if he has an understanding about the Quran, all the parents has to do is do what? Is remind him of Hadith. Remind him of where he is. He's living in this world. The problem sometimes comes when in cultivating and educating and nurturing, the mistake is a mistake that I, um, all my sciences are to live here, not to live in the hereafter. All my ma'rifa is for dunya. And when Sheikh said, Sheikh Muhammad Man Jami said, if, it, if you were going to be here in the dunya only, it would be okay to have ma'rifa that's only dealing with the dunya, but you're not just going to be here. So you just live here and there. Here and there. And that must be a reminder. Um, Sheikh Saleh Ali Sheikh said, for those people who are larger, maybe on Sunday we'll go over it, but those who are older, you continue to promote in your home the love of the Book of Allah. Five minutes of sitting with everybody in the house over a verse daily. He said, no one turns down five minutes. Five minutes. And you will find that, um, that Sheikh Ruth Amin had a time, Rahimullah Ta'ala, with his family. His was, his was on Juma. And the Sheikh Ibn Baz was very, very busy and had two wives, Rahimullah Ta'ala. He had a time for all the women in his family, and he had time for all the men in his family. He would sit with them. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he would sit with all the men in his family and sit with all the women in his family, and he would have dinner with them. And, he would, and they would discuss with them issues, and they would come to his issue, and they would discuss the religion together. So, so Sheikh, Sheikh Saleh said five minutes. A book of Allah. Take a verse. He said five. It extends. Yeah, they say, okay, let's start out. Who's got Jews? I'm going to memorize. We do. Okay. I already with Lamin and Shaytan and Virginia sitting around. I'm at the Sa'anun. Next one. You said you got it. Now let's go. You're next. And after him, you know, all right, pass. Go. I'm Nabi al Abdim Khalas. Alhamdulillah. Go ahead. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Of course, you make dua for them, but you, you stay active with them. Uh, Sheikh Saudi said, take them where they want to go. That's halal. Take everybody where they want to go. This is difficult for a working man, because a working man has got to do, has to take care of his, uh, his affairs. But he said, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Remember, Sheikh, you come with he said, take them where they want to go if it's possible. And in that time, you can get your point across to them. You're moving with them, you're taking them, and you get the point across. But the whole idea, understand that we're, we are up against a cultivation which, which separates children from their parents gradually, actively. You, they don't understand me. You don't understand me. You don't understand me. We don't understand you. They give birth to you. Why, why wouldn't I understand you? If, you, if your affair is part of the religion, 
then I raised you in it. Why would I not? Why would I understand the whole the whole uh, stereotype that being older suddenly means a person is does have has no understanding? That's, that's a stereotype, and just refute it. And sometimes it's not as easy, but you but you have to strive. And this is one of those things that takes patience to raise them that way. It takes patience to raise them that way. Strive with them. Stay with them. And that teenager is not some foreign beast, uh, a foreign a monster who is now suddenly going to raise up unless the parent does what? Allows. Unless the parent allows him, Dr. Rafiq. I don't know what this is. Sure, which point? What are you saying to your mother who is kneeling in front of you? Kneeling her knees and she's in trouble here. Are you going to talk to her children? Um, <coughs> sister, you, the question, I, I wasn't told I shouldn't read it. What can you say to a mother who was, who's, who's, who's learning patience and doesn't have any when it comes to her children? Um, that maybe a person doesn't have it because they believe there's an option of to have it or not. There's some things that we believe are optional. It's okay if I don't do it. It's not an option. Like, like, like teaching children, parents teaching children. There's no option. How many, how many, parents, how many parents here have children? How many, people, how many, how many are parents? There's, there's, no, there's not an option. It's not optional. It, it's a must. It's wajib. Yajib ali. Well, sabr well, ali ganadi. And a person must have sabr. So if, if the mother doesn't think that she doesn't have any patience with them, um, that means she doesn't, maybe, maybe she doesn't understand what's required of her, what it's, what it's like to have patience. She has to control herself. And notice it, it just said mother. It didn't say, I didn't say there was a father, so I'm not sure. If the father's involved, then you sit down with the father and you share this responsibility. You discuss it with the father about the children. Don't take it all upon yourself. There's a nice book, Alhamdulillah, that was translated by our brothers, The Role of a Woman in, in, um, in a Guide, A Woman's Guide to Raising a Family. It's, mashallah, it's a very good book. It's a very good book, mashallah, the barakallah, where it talks to women about the, the, the essential characteristics of the role of a mother, wife and mother in a home. As you know, that's, that's, another, one, that's another one of those tayyarat. It's another one of those, those, those ideas that Women no longer belong in our homes. They no longer belong there, but they belong in the, out, in the outside world. It isn't true. They belong in our homes, except for some, some um, expertise, such as doctors, nurses, teachers. There are some. But, but that's, that's um, because they deal specifically with women. But women belong in our homes, and they belong with our Children, and that's what's natural. Sometimes if a woman has to work and she's tired and she comes home, and I know what the sister's situation is, it's difficult. You know when, how it is when you work and come home. And you're tired. The Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh Fozan says in the book, he says when a man comes home, he doesn't have the kind of time to spend with a child. What, what is he doing? He's resting, re re recharging himself to get ready to get back out the next day and, and go back and do it again. So make sure that you understand what sabr is and that you understand that there is a reward for having it and that you must show kindness to children. We have to be kind to them if we want to have a good result. You must show kindness. You must show them love. You must, one, uh, 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 Sheikh said you must, you must, Sheikh Farakou said you must touch them on the head lovingly he said, you have to hug them. You have to kiss them. The Messenger of Allah said, I'm kissed. Hassan and Hussein, you must kiss them. And believe it, Allah Ta'ala Alam, from where we come from, this is some new ground for us. I want to have 10 kids. Have, does it mean raise? What does it mean have? Which one is it? 
Because have is different than raise. Or it's along with raise, not just have. It's have and nurture and raise and care for and feed and clothe and love and protect. In boys, it is, it is giving them the, char the characteristic to be what in the future? A man. A man. A man. A man. And yet you know now in the society, there's challenges against basic manhood. And for a girl to be what? To be a woman. And as you can see now, there's challenges to basic womanhood. They want to own. O-W-N. Act like they don't know what that is. <laughs> Smile a lot. And, and maybe people don't know what it is. It's Oprah Wimpy's network. And they're networking. They're networking to the minds of, of young women that they want to empower women. What does that mean? When they power them. Nothing that her husband has to say, perhaps, because the whole, the whole idea is that everything is all the same everywhere. Everything is equal, all the same. And, and youngsters come up with this idea, too, that at a certain age, I should have equality with my mother and father. That isn't true. Everyone has a place. So I say that I mean, I start from start from when they're very small and train them when they're very small. Don't don't wait. Start with them. And block the things that will harm them away from them and, and train them and teach them. And I put something in. I can't understand that. This was a test for him. She said, "Why did you say you should turn for this?" Um, we're going uh, in the shout out to Ida. In the next talk, um, uh, that I have, even is going to be al qaidu fi saba. Even the Taymiyyah, rahimahullah taala, and he and he talks about the two types of of um, affliction, afflictions of two types. The one type is the one that we know is from the Samat. It is hurricane, flood, uh, forest fire, earthquake, and people have no part in them. Mm -hmm. And so that one is easier to accept than the affliction that was caused by Bani Adam. If Bani Adam's hands is involved in the affliction to another person, that one is not so easy. That's what we're going to talk about. So, your sister, what, everything you said about backing away, he talks about this. The first thing I would say, I'll say it now, is whenever there's an affliction at the hands of Bani Adam, do not remove yourself from the cause of the affliction. Include yourself in the equation. Don't back up and say it was all them. The Sheikh said, the next thing is, is that understand, ma sha Allah who can, ma lam yasha lam yakun that what Allah wills happens, and what he does not will does not happen. He said, turn to the one who allowed it to happen, don't turn to the servant who did it. But turn to Allah, and that way, you can relieve yourself, because the other thing is, is known as intiqam, it's trying to gain what? Trying to, do, uh, to get revenge, and revenge is dangerous. One believer trying to get revenge on another believer, that is dangerous. And it, all it does is humiliate the one who seeks the revenge. It humiliates that one if he tries that. Well, yep. So we're going to talk about it a bit tonight, Tyler. So if you're, if you're here, um, there are certain steps to, to dealing with that. Cause affliction in which Banny Adam was involved in. Because, it, because the servant made him understand where the hurricane came from. But when Banny Adam hit, afflicts him, he knew where it came from. It came from him. His knowledge of where it came from <coughs> now directs his attention toward him, and, and souls do not like to be beaten. They don't like people beating them, overcoming them. Souls don't like that. So he said it's a medicine. I'd ask to deal with that, Monica. Thank you. Thank you for this topic. Thank you for this topic. Thank you for this topic.
here. There's a little bit less exposure to it right here. So I put this right here. I wonder if there's an answer for this for this question. I don't I don't know the answer. First, I asked the question that since we know so we know that every life has this painful qadr in it. Every life, he said. The Sheikh said, "Mulaima or mu'nima." He said, so the person, the question was asked, "How do you prepare yourself for it, yani, before it comes?" Yani, taqarrab ila Allah azza wa jal. The the study of the aqidah itself. What is that? What is study of aqidah for? Protects what? Huh? Hey, naam. And in a child, protects the heart. In a child, protects what? In a child, what does it protect? Fitra. The study of aqidah protects the fitra. The child was born ready to do what? Good. And so the study of aqidah protects the fitra so that it maintains it. The Prophet ﷺ said, everyone was born with the, equipped to do good. But the parent does things Weakness in, in, in nurturing that allows the ways of the Christians to enter, allows the ways of Jews to enter, allows the ways of Magians and so on. So uh, the study of Aqidah, so if you, if you study Aqidah, the study of Aqidah is so that you strengthen yourself, as, as our brother said, you strengthen your heart. You're supposed to continuously study it. Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh Baz, from what we knew of him, Ta'ala, he would have Fatih al-Majid read in front of him. Ta'ala that's a majid. Shaykh Kitab Tawheed. He would start at the beginning, and when he was done, you know what he would do? Start again. Start again. Shaykh al Bani said, the study of Aqidah must be strong and continuous because it is what per, uh, has a person understand and, uh, the, the, the uh, Allah Azza wa Jal. How to be near to Allah Azza wa Jal. Who was Allah Azza wa Jal? If Ali Allah, what he does, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What he loves, what he does not love. What he is, what he does for the, what he serve for the servants, it gives the the proper concept of the universe. Hey now, sa? So here the rubbi is about is, is partly about what about the creation of the universe and the universe, and it gives the proper concept of the universe to the adult and to the child. This is the universe, not Tinker Bell and Thor and Asgard and Spider Man, and but this is the universe. And so, therefore, my role as the father is, is, a, is part of the universe. It's part of the universal role as father. Role of mother is part of the universal role of a mother. The, part of, the role of women is universal. We tell people all the time Islam is universal. It's universal because that's where it fits in the universe. Of the universe that Allah has been created. Whoever can read Arabic, read what Sheikh, you know, what Sheikh Bozan says in Aqidah al-Tawheed about what Kufar think about the universe and what the position of the universe is. You have to teach a child about the proper concept of the universe and the concept of people, who people are. Don't leave it to our neighbors to tell them who people are. Part of the situation of you say of drifting is another concept about what people are, how people are supposed to respond. That, that concept comes from Islam about where people's lives are going. The, the outcome of the life of people is supposed to have to be taught by Islam. You cannot allow it to be taught with the influence of those people who don't actually understand where human life winds up. If they teach it, then what? Human life winds up where? In a Maserati. Yeah. Or it winds up, it winds up with nothing. There's nothing for us except the time. And there's no place to go from here. Teaches people how to take the world in their hand but don't take it into their heart, as Sheikh Muhammad and Jami Jam said. He said, take it into your hand. Don't take it into your heart. Take it into your hand and help mold it. So some of us have the opposite. The opposite. We, won't, we won't help mold it and shape it. You and I have a responsibility to help mold and shape the physical world so that we can be protected in it. And we're not spectators and people who stand on the side while others mold the physical world and we act like the molecules were not created by Allah. The atoms weren't created by Allah. And every atom has a place and every molecule has a place in the universe that he created. Every molecule has a purpose. If we don't understand it, some of us don't understand, so therefore we don't have our children be trained to deal with it, to come in society. 
to be to have confidence, to be confident in their home, and confident in the society they live in, so they can add good to it, to populate the earth as a believer. And this is something which takes patience, and it must be strong. It must be strong. And there's no time for leisure. Sport. There's no time. I tried to leave early. I'm sorry. I saw people doing like this. I tried. I don't know if you want that. No, it's not. Now, <coughs> Muslim girls asking 13 year old daughter does she like boys? Mm. <coughs> That's not a good question. Uh, if it's not fixed, don't break it. If it's not break, don't fix it. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's not fixed, don't. <laughs> what is it? Uh, anyway, this is not a good question. Thank you. It's not a good question. The question is, what is the proper way to talk with young Muslim girls? For, uh, yes, in this, for, instance, for instance, asking your 13-year-old daughter, does she like boys? Look at that. Don't, don't, don't ask her that. What you, what you and I are supposed to do, which, which, which breaches her about her body, is teach her the ahkam of salah, the ahkam of wudu, which, which starts to cover things about women. It develops women. Secondly, we were told long ago that if we have a telfaz in the house, if we have a television in the home, and we turn it on, it's something you cannot control, and it, it is already said it is a programmer. So what is it programming to do? It allows pictures to come across it that incite um, carnal nature. It incites carnal nature. So therefore, if a child, young child is sitting there watching, the actions of men and women, or even young boys and young girls, maybe there'll be a curiosity about that. So the first step is, is you're in your home, you're going to have to do something about <coughs> you. It's on your neck. It's on your neck, right on the neck of the fathers. Your neck is on your neck. It's your responsibility. You're going to go before a lie. You're going to be asked about it. It's on your neck. And it's not one of those old philosophies that somebody can turn around and say the society did it. No, you did it. You can't talk about talk about the white man did it. No, you did it. No offense, you know what I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> you can't talk about talking about. <laughs> it was when I slipped, slipped back and said, what? This is <laughs> he know I didn't mean about like about people. But you know, yeah. No, no, no. People are people are, this this thing is still cre is creeping back. The old racial complaints. So that somebody has somebody has feelings about race. No feelings about race. It's not race. It's in it's in here. It starts inside, it's not the color of the skin. But it's, 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 it's creeping back. People are fighting. You know, they killed the brother. They killed the guy. He, he was in, in the neighborhood. They killed so-and-so. He had a hoodie on. They killed him. That was his father's fault that he acted like that. That was his father's fault. You hardly ever hear people say that. We're trying to get the men to be fathers. Trying to get them to be fathers. <laughs> trying to get them to be fathers. Tavon, whatever his name is. Who did he call before he died? He called his girlfriend. SubhanAllah. He didn't call his dad. Call some girl. Hey, I'm about to get killed. So panel law. You see? The first thing, if men have men have young men, they need to they need to have their men understand the relationship between them and the father and don't break the relationship. And young girls should have a relationship with their father and their mothers and don't allow it to be broken by anybody, by anyone. And there are challenges to that relationship. To be like somebody else. <laughs> it is not good to be a wannabe. Wannabe is not has, doesn't have a good connotation to it. Does it? Is wannabe, wannabe has no good connotation. Wannabe is negative. It's a negative. It always has been a negative connotation. So how is it that young, uh, young Muslim children are wannabes? They want to be like, what's the name? And they want to be like so-and-so. They want to be like so-and-so. Because so-and-so is being shown that he has control over his environment. He has a lot of money. And he's young. That's, that's how we lead. So-and-so is young. They got a lot of money. They go in the world where they want to go. And they hang out and do what they want to do. And they say what they want to say. It's all false. It's all an illusion. And it's up to parents to cut through the illusion, not just cut through the illusion, but to block the doors of it as much as they can. And, and, and have other brothers and sisters who feel like they do help them block it. 
It's not easy. If you, if you heard it, I'll let you know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not easy. But it is wajib. Yajibu al sabro fi tarbiyat al awlad. It is wajib to have patience while teaching children. It's wajib. And who does it start with? It starts with dad. And then mom. And then mom and dad together. For you. So no, you shouldn't ask. If there's no reason to ask, do they like boys? And, and if you hear someone asking your child that, then you quietly pull them up and, and you say to them nicely, don't ever ask my child that again. That's my child, anything like that again. Because some people don't know how to raise. How many have more? How many have more, have more than four children? Yes. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. There's no doubt. Globally, no matter where you are in the world, no matter where you are in the world, but study the guidelines and follow them. Understand that the deen of Islam is complete. What's the proof of that? So it has to come from Islam because Islam is complete and perfect. So that you, we can't turn to others and say, well, I'm a, for right now, I'm going to turn to somebody else and let them do this. No. It's learn the guidelines, follow the guidelines. Learn the guidelines, follow them. Have that. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shahadu wa nari nanta staffi liku wa tubi ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.